Another big story to tell you about is a new federal report that says human-induced climate change is affecting every corner of the country. The National Climate Assessment was released Tuesday and says the effects of global warming will become more and more disruptive across the nation over the next century. It could include extended droughts like the one Californians are experience, experiencing, heat waves, and higher sea levels. Such sweeping changes have been caused by an average warming of less than two degrees Fahrenheit over most land areas of the country in the past century. If greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane continue to escalate in a rapid pace, scientists say the warming could exceed 10 degrees by the end of the century. Daniel Bader is a climate scientist at Columbia University Center for Climate Systems Research, and he was a part of the research team that produced this report and he's joining us here in our New York studio. Hi, Daniel. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having you. me this evening. It's so good to have you here. So, you know, the, we've been talking about, it's now called climate change. For many years, we called it global warming, but this has been a part of the conversation for quite some time. So what does this report tell us, indicate, that hasn't been a part of the conversation all along? Well, the new findings of the National Climate Assessment really are an advancement of our knowledge of changes that have been observed and our ability and confidence in linking these changes to human activity. A few key findings of the report are our temperatures have been warming over the past century. Um, 2012 was the warmest year on record. Um, similar trend um, for sea levels. Sea levels are rising. That's something projected to continue in the future and depending on ice loss, there's a range of projections. Arctic sea ice is declining. 2012 had the lowest area of Arctic sea ice on record. And we've also seen increases in extreme uh, events, such as intense precipitation and heat waves. You know, uh, there, there have been over the years political discussions about whether or not global warming was actually happening, which is what we were calling it at the time, and whether or not it was human induced, that, that perhaps it was just a natural part of the evolution of our creation. Does this report sort of put an end to that discussion? What this report really does is put forward the best scientific understanding of our knowledge, how greenhouse gases are contributing to climate change, and really pre presenting it in a context of we're vulnerable to our climate, we've been in the past, we're projected to see an increase in some climate extremes in the future, and really gets us thinking about how we can respond. And that, of course, is the next place to go. Is that, okay, so now that we have this huge body of information, it's an 800 page report, then what do we do with this information? What do we do with it? Well, our response is twofold. We have to do both mitigation and adaptation. When it comes to mitigation, that's what people may be familiar with in terms of reducing their emissions of greenhouse gases, changing light bulbs to energy efficient bulbs, driving hybrid vehicles. So, reducing our emissions that are contributing to the product. Unfortunately, as the report details, many impacts are already being felt and projected to become more severe in the future. So we have to respond and learn to live with these changed environments. So that's what we, refer, as scientists, refer to as adaptation, mm -hmm. building a more resilient future so that we can live with a changed climate. All right, and I get exactly what you just said, the mitigation and the adaptation. However, is this really more about the things that we can do that slow down the effects of climate change? Have we gone past the point of no return? Or can we in some ways stop or reverse some of the effects? We have the ability through mitigation to slow some of the changes that are projected. But unfortunately, we're gonna see some impacts and we're already seeing through just extreme weather events which can't be directly linked to climate change, but we are vulnerable. So we need to build in, for example, the recovery from Hurricane Sandy, build a system that can withstand future storms and make sure that when the next storm, or if it does come, we can respond better. There were eight government agencies, I believe, hundreds of scientists and politicians that were a part of gathering this information, including you and your organization. Anything in this report that surprised you? The report is tremendous, you know, multi-year effort, numbers and numbers of scientists, the best scientists that are available in the United States. Um, what surprises me is here in New York City, we're focused on urban and infrastructure impacts. The report is far-reaching. It covers different geographic regions of the country and then different sectors, anywhere from energy, water, um, 
com uh, community groups, indigenous peoples, ecosystems, agriculture. It really looks at all the vast impacts that climate change will have on the United States. And so is the value of this report just the, the uh, thoroughness, the comprehensiveness of it, or it, are there some nuggets of new information, new truths in there? The new truth is really our better and understanding of the changes that we've seen, uh, more knowledge of what we can uh, project for the future, and the confidence we can say about what we've seen and what we're projecting for the future. That's really the advancement in the report itself. All right, I get all of that, and that's all very global, very comprehensive. So for our viewers at home, what can they do with this information? As we as reporters are reporting on this very complex, very large report, what should the viewer take away from this? I think the viewer can take away their simple steps for them to mitigate their impact, which many that may be aware of, and that goes to the hybrids and reducing their emissions. They also can get involved in their community. There's a lot of local efforts. Cities are one area that are leading the charge in responding to climate change. Community groups can start taking climate change into their uh, community of practice, which may not or may not relate to climate directly, but they can bring it in and then start thinking about how they can plan for the future. And people who have been impacted by a recent severe weather event, they can think, when the, if the next storm comes, what would I do differently? How could I be better prepared in the future? All right, we'll be talking about this for quite some time to come. Daniel Bader, thank you so much for coming. Thank in. you. I do appreciate it. And this is Arise America.